A new fad among so-called climate activists appears to be gluing themselves to things. First it was Rhodes, but now some idiots in Italy try to glue themselves to a famous painting by Botticelli, Spring. Luckily, the painting was protected by glass, so it was not damaged, and I guess they just used some kind of cheap glue, as they were quickly removed by security. Recently, there was some other climate idiot who made a stunt with the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. I have no idea why activists are attacking famous artworks now. People who appreciate great art are a small minority in the world. I think perhaps the idea here is actually the opposite of what it seems. They, and by they I mean the people who fund these activist groups, because they are all funded by rich people, they actually want to create a negative perception of environmentalists as crazy or stupid which is exactly what is happening. I consider myself a defender of the environment. There are lots of real environmental problems today, from pollution of the oceans, to deforestation, to the extinction of several species. But climate change... Climate change is just too abstract a problem, and it's more similar to a doomsday code. People predicting the end of the world have existed for thousands of years, and this is more or less the same thing. Even if climate change is a real problem, it's probably not going to destroy the planet in 10 years or, or how many years they say is going to happen. And also the solutions proposed to reduce the so-called climate change don't really seem to make much sense or change things much. Their main effect is making people poor by reducing the options of energy. Now, completely renewable, free, green energy is likely a myth. Everything has its costs and its ups and downs. Let's take a look, for example, of wind turbines. They are supposed to be green, right? But are they really? They make natural landscapes ugly, and they kill a million birds a year just in the United States. Who knows how many worldwide? Also, the blades are very hard to recycle and usually have to be taken to landfills or burned. They are made of a mix of balsa wood and fiberglass, which is toxic. And they are really huge. And even though they say their lifetime is 20 years, they actually need to be replaced every 8 or 10 years, at most. So, I suppose we should look into alternative forms of green energy. But what? Hamster wheels. A single hamster running can power a small lamp. So, in theory, it would be possible to use several hamster wheels to produce a larger amount of electricity. The problem is then, you would need a lot of hamsters. To power just one house for a year, you need something like 486,000 hamsters. But perhaps the problem is just that hamsters are very small and inefficient. What if you could get a really big creature and use it to spin a giant wheel? It is said that scientists at the University of Tokyo are apparently trying this with Godzilla. According to the scientists, the monster could produce by himself enough energy for the entire city of Tokyo. That is, if he doesn't escape and destroy the city in the process. Farts. You can laugh, but there are people actually doing this. They are harvesting farts from cows in order to use the methane gas for cooking. Apparently, cow farts contribute to global warming, so this idea would help the environment in more than one way. However, it doesn't seem to be very practical, it doesn't produce a lot of energy, and it's certainly not very comfortable for the cows. However, there are some projects to apply this system to humans as well. The Japanese horror manga writer Junji Ito once had the idea of a walking machine powered by human gas. So maybe the scientists in Tokyo, who are now studying Godzilla, could also take a look at that. Anger. Anger is an energy! Anger is an energy, sang Johnny Rotten in the 90s. I think it was a metaphor. But what if anger could be literally used as energy? This one is really interesting, because even the anger of climate activists could be used to produce electricity. Now, there is no practical way to transform the kinetic energy of our movements into electricity. Otherwise, Triglipuff here could produce enough energy to power a small apartment. But there is a way to transform sound waves into electrical energy. If you could harness the noise from protests, this could power entire cities. And it doesn't matter if they are climate protests, right-wing protests, left-wing protests, etc. As long as they generate a lot of noise. I am not sure how much energy can be produced from the human voice, but I suppose that just a single powerful scream like this one would probably be enough to power a large house.